It's time for Justice for All Behind the Badge video. Stream live from Team Toyota Route 1 in Langhorne with your host, Tom Mellon. Featuring Bucks County District Attorney Matt Weintraub and Bucks County Sheriff Fred Harris. Here's your host from Team Toyota, Tom Mellon. Good morning and welcome uh, once again to Justice for All with District Attorney Matt Weintraub. And we have a very, very we're going to continue uh, just good startling uh, studies and uh, prosecutorial ways that uh, our district attorney brought people to justice. And we're going to, as the last show, uh, you'll hear a lot of uh, the, the effective work that keeps these people where they belong, right, Matt? That's, That's true. for sure. But uh, I want to uh, make everyone aware that the reason we have this show is to have you, the listener, understand uh, the hard work and all the efforts that uh, our police officers, our sheriff's department, and uh, finally, the, the latter part, when it goes to uh, when the evidence is submitted and it, 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 it ends up on the desk of uh, Matt Weintraub, how effective uh, him and his team are here in Bucks County to keep the, the streets nice and safe and secure. <coughs> That's the purpose of the show, Justice for All. I'm really honored to be the, uh, the host of this, uh, helping out with Matt, just to uh, have him reveal a lot of good stories and the hard, effective work that he provides each and every day. Matt, thanks for being here again. Uh, my pleasure, as always, Tom. You're a great host. You're a great moderator, too. Well, thank you very much, and uh, I couldn't do it without you. I mean, obviously, this is your show, and it's it's so important that people understand that uh, when they vote, they're voting the right way when, when they bring a person as you uh, as the district attorney. That's and, uh, I'll so take that endorsement every day, Tom. Thank no, you very no question, much. No question about it. No question about it. <laughs> I want to thank Paul Muller, the sponsor of our show, uh, for many, many years. All of his altruistic efforts, uh, not only with the radio shows that he provides on WBCB radio, and obviously it's not just 1490, but now it's 107.3 on the FM dial. So the signal's a lot stronger. And some of our listeners down in the uh, Philadelphia area, they used to say to me, Tom, I can't. I, I really, it's coming in scratchy. Yeah. So now they're telling me, hey, that signal's a little better. Now we can uh, listen to all your, uh, you know, all your shows. The more the better. The more the better, right? So, yeah. Merle, you did a good job at <laughs> WPCB uh, linking in the uh, the FM dial now. And uh, once again, I want to thank Paul Muller for all of his uh, efforts and work. Uh, we, we have a great show, and I want to jump into this as, as soon as possible. Uh, the... <laughs> I just want to cover one important thing here, this debacle, this national debacle that's going on with uh, our children's schools and these fatalities that uh, continue to occur. My comment on it, obviously everyone's out there, gun control, gun control. You know, you, the Second Amendment still needs to be respected and honored. Uh, guns in the hands of the right people to arm yourself and protect yourself, obviously, is a, is a good thing. But... Uh, I'm thinking, Matt, the, the application process is where it should begin, or at least that's one of the, the avenues that they need to strengthen that process so that, you know, it doesn't fall between the cracks where someone who has a little bit of a mental history, this last, or one of the last cases, he was actually on Facebook talking about the incident. Yeah. So we just need to be more, ready, you know, very uh, active so that when, whenever we hear anything going on, we need to uh, help mitigate that ability for these uh, weapons to fall into the wrong hands, into the, into the criminal hands. I agree with you. I, uh, I, I got my gun permit a while ago, but uh, I, I had no, no issue or concern with going through that process. I thought it was a fair process. And uh, I, will, uh, I will also agree with you, Tom. I, I, I think that Universal background checks uh, are, are pretty well proven. They're not going to stop everything. Obviously, you still need strong enforcement. We have a lot of great laws already on the books that yes. if we enforce will keep us safe. But universal background checks, uh, that application process, that's a, that's a, that's a worthy thing. And uh, I also think uh, what's very important is safe gun storage at home. Uh, I have a, a handgun at my house, and I, I keep it locked up. Um, I understand now that the uh, the biotechnology is really, really advancing. 
it's uh it's still be a it's still uh, i think it's expensive but uh, i understand now that the biotechnology is such that you you literally all you need to do is grab your handgun that's pre-programmed to your biotechnology to your biology and then it becomes uh, uh activated and capable of firing so mm -hmm. it goes from being safe to being live just with your touch uh, and I think that's the way of the future there. No question about it. Uh, and and it's it's just a very serious topic when you see all these uh, senseless lives that are being lost as a result Horrible. of the you know some of these sociopaths that are out there. But uh, I'm hoping that we can continue to improve. Uh, a one th another beginning uh, is to strengthen the security at all the schools. Yes, I know uh, we had Fred Harron on last month. And uh, Fred was talking about that, and he's like a strong proponent of being certain that if you have security in place at all of these schools, not just some of them, and uh, the strict measures where, you know, people can be checked, but with the presence of security, it's going gonna, it's gonna to prevent this. I'd like to make a couple comments on that yes. on particular point. Well, first, I want to say that uh, we are not sitting on our hands here in Bucks County. We... Uh, we're very fortunate. Our county is it's it's vast, but it's a it's made up of a small network of it's a community feel really. And just last week, we were able to get all of these stakeholders in one room. It was every police chief from every one of our departments, and every superintendent of all uh, 13 of our school districts, all in one room. And the whole two hours was spent on school safety, keeping kids safe. How can we reinforce our schools a lot of it tom has to do with just making sure that the existing measures are that are already in place are being uh utilized meaning if the door is supposed to be shut and locked let's make sure the doors are shut and locked let's not make any exceptions to that um, those protocols are in place for a reason the other thing and i know that this has been on the national forefront regardless of party affiliation or you're liberal or you're conservative, is that um, mental health and, and, and public safety go hand in hand. And uh, one of the things I have to give credit for, Tom, I in Pennsylvania is the Safe to Say program, which you can look up online, and there's a downloadable app. And that program started, uh, was prior to the pandemic, and it was a uh, program started by the attorney general it was ma uh, mandated mm -hmm. by our legislature and since that program's inception they've, they've saved literally thousands of young people's lives wow um and and what we have seen is that people if if they're permitted to do so anonymously but not always but that that option is there mm -hmm. they will make a report and say my friend is suicidal or my friend is frankly homicidal or may bring a gun to school and it has saved thousands of lives so one of my ideas that I had and I put this forth last week is similar to how now we have uh, in many instances forced savings with our IRAs and our 401ks where it's automatically you're opted in and you have to opt out but you can opt out at any time okay every kid that brings a cell phone to school should be made to have this app on their phone to start now, if they want to opt out the minute they have it on the phone and they want to take it off, right? probably can't stop that. But let's say there's 120,000 kids in Bucks County, and I think that was the number that was proffered last week. If you get 60% of them that keep that app on their phone, uh, you are guaranteed to increase the usage. And by that very nature of the law of large numbers, we will save lives. So there was a, l a lot of uh, thoughtful discussion about that last week. Interesting. Yeah, and I think just almost by accident or by coincidence will save lives if they make that, that default as opposed to opting in, opting out. Right. I think that may work. Part of the technology that, that everyone has the ability right now with, with these phones to put it to good use. Yeah, and I will also say to give credit, any safe to say tip that's given goes to the central network, but now it is it is so refined that it does – trickle down to the local law enforcement it does trickle down to the local school and those individual kids are getting help and treatment every single every single lead is run down good point 
Good point. And it's nice to know that for the listeners to hear some of the work that's going on and the cohesiveness with all of the uh, people that are instrumental in making the county safer, especially with our school children. Yeah, we tend to sometimes get uh, bogged down in our, uh, people call it siloing now, like law enforcement stays only with law enforcement, school deals with school, medical and uh, uh, mental health stays just in their own silo. But really, we all have the same goal, and that's to keep our kids and our community safe. So we all constantly need to do a better job discussing, especially a child that may have a problem or is giving some indications sure. that they're about to go off. That's for sure. We want to nip that in the bud, and frankly, we want to get we want to do the right thing that we may never get credit for, and that's gotcha. present some, prevent something before it ever even happens. Ever even happens, exactly. Amen to that. Man. Yeah. Uh, June twenty second. That's only six days away. I, I can't believe how this month is going by, Bree. Uh, where are we? The sixteenth. Yeah, six days away. This coming Wednesday next week, the Bucks County Tour of Honor. I happen to be wearing a shirt today. Uh, of which, you know, I'm a proud uh, supporter of it and member on the board as well as Matt Weintraub uh, and many other board members. We'll be together. We'll convene at the Ben Salem Country Club uh, around 9, 10 o'clock in the morning for our first annual golf outing, Matt. Uh, you'll be on vacation. I think we had one last year. We Was it? Did we yeah. have one last year? Where yeah. am I? It is. Yeah, it's I the so. second annual. That's so. right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, come to think of it, Frank Pirano ran it. That's right. Yeah. Yes, he did. Uh, honest Frank. So, once again, we'll be there at Ben Salem Country Club, and uh, many golfers will come out. You can come out and uh, support us. Uh, there's many ways that you can help fund the, the, these events, uh, especially with the golf outing, and have a lot of fun as well. Matt will not be using his uh, – athletic skills because we'll be down the shore but uh that's true uh, but that's all right you'll be swinging in other areas and, yes sir uh, yeah where are you going by well you want to be down down in the yeah i'll be seashore down in the jersey region. shore yeah south jersey couple of couple of points there yeah get, getting together with my family for father's day which is an annual tradition right uh, my daddy always coached me when we were little he says all the athletes everybody when they're on tv they always say hi mom he says if you're <laughs> ever on tv i want you to say hi dad so here goes hi dad how are you? God there you bless go. you. Happy yeah. Father's Day you coming lunch. up. You had lunch with or we breakfast just, yeah, with him. Yeah, we just there, did. Yes, we did. Which is fantastic. I'm yeah. glad he is. And he's doing well? Yeah, he's hanging in there. He's he's tough, tougher than leather. He's 80 years old, and he's still <laughs> still ticking. Still ticking yeah, and doing God bless well. Him. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's great. So the golf outing, it, you know, it'll be all day, uh, an all day affair. Everybody will enjoy themselves. There'll be lots of prizes. Team Toyota's doing a hole-in-one so that if someone does, uh, is fortunate enough when they get to the sixth hole, and they take that swing, and it lands on the green and right into the cup. Well, Paul Mother will be happy to uh, provide that person with a two-year lease uh, of a RAV4 that we will order for them. And uh, that's one of the many prizes that, uh, that are going to be available. But uh, y there's still time. If you uh, want to come out, you can call 215-768-6505 uh, for more information about our Bucks County Tour of Honor Golf event where am i i I thought this was the first year but it was last year we yeah, had one as was. well uh, yeah and uh, so I, many I, things going on i know we got to probably take a break in yeah. a second and I, i'm reminded of a story you got to after the break i got a funny hole in one story oh you do yeah, great but the tour of honor so worthwhile we're getting our veterans down to washington dc we just we just came back a couple months ago from another successful trip and uh, there's never a dry eye on that ride home my, it's quite spectacular my god that's why we can't tell you everything about all the, the new all the different things that go on and the activities and the honors that we provide for the veterans, but it's just fantastic, the Bucks County Tour of Honor. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Matt has some interesting cases to discuss on the other side after we speak to or promote some of our sponsors. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We have something for everyone at Team Toyota. With used cars starting under $6,000, over 80 Toyota certified used vehicles, pre-owned trucks, vans, SUVs, hybrids, and more. And they all come with one year of complimentary maintenance and roadside assistance. Plus, you can shop completely online or in our safe and spacious showrooms for a comfortable and fast process that puts you in control. Visit TeamToyota.net and be safe, be strong, and be a team.
Are you curious what old antiques, collectibles, or household contents are worth? Listen Friday mornings for What's It Worth with Mike the Appraiser, right here on 1490 WBCB. Attention all BCWSA customers in Bucks, Montgomery, and Chester counties. No BCWSA customers will face a shutoff of their water or sewer services until July 20th at the earliest. CEO Benjamin Jones would like to assure all BCWSA customers that the guarantee of clean water and sewer service will continue uninterrupted during these difficult times. BCWSA. Prove it. WBCB is now on your FM dial at 107.3. Serving Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer County since 1958, you can now listen to all of your BCB favorites crystal clear on 107.3 FM. A new age for WBCB on a new frequency, 107.3. At St. Mary Medical Center, they're on a mission to help you live your healthiest life. Learn more about their advanced technology and innovative procedures, as well as the small steps you can take to be your healthiest self. Meet their highly trained physicians and skilled professionals. Count on St. Mary for experience, brilliant technology, and the most powerful medicine of all, simple human kindness. St. Mary Healthline, every Wednesday at 9 a.m. on 1490 WBCB. Okay, get your attentive ears ready because we're back here, Justice for All, with Bucks County District Attorney Matt Weintraub and a lot more to share with you, some good stories. But uh, you have a funny story to share yeah, first, I'd like Matt. To, yeah, lead off. I have, I have one funny one that's sort of anecdotal about uh, maybe it, it, it pertains a lot to politics, but it pertains to life really. And then one talking about a great courtroom story that I'd love to lead off with. But sure. you mentioned the whole in one uh, sponsorship, which I think is fantastic. You know, Paul Muller always puts his money where his mouth is. He's very community oriented, and we're grateful to have him here in Bucks County. We sure are. And uh, so here's my story. I people would always comment to me about how I won my uh, first election in uh, 2017. And if you followed politics back then, the the county really turned. It, it used to be all Republican led uh, in the county offices, and it got we all the Republicans got swept out except for one, which was me. And uh, people were like, man, you were really lucky. Uh, and certain cases occurred, and we'll talk about some of them. We and were lucky that that, that happened. <laughs> well, you're, you're, you're kind to say that. But so, and I will always take it with a grain of salt. You got to remember, never forget your roots and stay humble. Sure. And that keeps you on the right path. And and, and I would always tell this story, though, and say, yeah, well, my brother and I, I, I come from four, two brothers and a sister and me. And my next youngest brother is only a year younger than I am. And we took this trip cross country when we were only teenagers, which was incredible. We were adult, but we were like 18 and 19 or 19 and 20, just a cross country. Got in a car and went. And it was a great trip. We're staying with some friends of his in uh, Winona, Minnesota, which is like where the Mississippi actually enters the country. It comes, starts from Canada, actually, and enters the country in, Win in Minnesota and divides Minnesota and Wisconsin. Okay. So we're there and we're getting ready to go out for a night with our friends and uh, their dad is there, Mr. Miraz, I remember his last name. And we're looking at a plaque on his wall and it's a hole in one plaque. And so I said, wow, that's incredible. You, you hit a hole in one? And he says, yeah, there's a little story about that. All my friends said I was lucky for getting a hole in one in this, this laconic Midwestern draw. And he says, hell, I was aiming at the hole, wasn't I? <laughs> so I always, that stuck with me now sure. for 30 some years. The point is, is yeah, of course you're a little lucky, but you are still trying to accomplish that objective. That's so true. It's better to be lucky than good, but it's even better to be both. How about that? And yeah, that always stuck with me. And he was very assertive when he said it. Yeah, it was like, oh, great. I was it's, aiming for the hole. It stuck with me. It stuck with me. You couldn't dispute it. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, and he got that hole in one. Uh, but that just reminds me, you know, while we're talking about some lighthearted stories, and this will segue into some of the cases, uh, you and I on the break, we were talking about some of the tough things we see Oof. and do and experience. And some of the, the, the toughest cases that, that I personally have, have handled – involve children yes, yes. and uh sometimes it's uh 
you know, you could you, you certainly could say that, that, that a child that survives is lucky because they still get an opportunity to have a future. Uh, and that's true, but even some of them experience just awful, awful things. And that's why I feel so passionately about uh, protecting them, sure, preventing future harm, but holding those that would harm a child uh, accountable, accountable to the fullest extent of the Amen. law. So we had this horrible, horrible case. Uh, it ended up being a death penalty case uh, where this guy murdered a, 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 a pregnant lady and her four-year-old daughter because the daughter was a witness. Oh, God. Yeah, it was awful. And uh, so, so when you're doing a death penalty case in Pennsylvania, and we still have the death penalty on the books, but uh, nobody has been put to death since I think 1993. Or Gary Heidnick was. Gary Heidnick was the last Maybe one. It was 97, but yes. it was in the 90s. Yes. So when you when you pick a jury at a death penalty case, as opposed to normally where you just stand up and address the whole pool of people, you do it one at a time, one at a time. Interesting. It's you, the defense attorney, the defendant, your cop, the judge, and this one one juror will sit in the ju- in the in the witness box. And you ask them about their feelings, their thoughts uh, about the death penalty and other pointed questions. But one of the things, and you can only learn this from experience, Tom, one of the things that I learned or intuited, and this is about being lucky, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Is you want to try to make a connection with that juror because if they're, if they're picked, they're going to be with you for the next couple of weeks and they're going to be deciding – the most important decision that they can make life or death life decision or death. literally yeah. literally uh so you need to make a connection with them if you can so the the defense attorney goes first and that's how it works you go one on one off i would lead off then he would lead off then i would lead off so he goes first and he's starting to pick up on some of the stuff that i'm doing and he's very experienced and wonderful guy john fiervani's his name and he asked the lady one of my questions he says to her what do you do for, for fun when you're not working? And she says, I'm a gym rat. Uh, and we actually were able to look some of this stuff up. This was early on when we were able to look stuff up on the computer in sure. real time. And there was there had been a story about her in the paper about right. how she uh, came to health by working very, very hard and transformed herself. So... Uh, I was like, oh, that's a great one to riff on. He asks her questions. He has no more questions. It's my turn. I stand up and I say, ma'am, g- good afternoon. Uh, oh, oh, and Fiervani said he had no idea what a gym rat was, so she had to explain it to him, <laughs> which is, you know, that was a funny little moment. Sure. So I want to have a moment. I stand up and I look at this lady. She works for the government. She was pretty pretty tough looking. And if you're looking at this, I love you. You're still you're great if you're watching it. She's, I say to her, first thing out of my mouth, good afternoon. And just for the record, I do know what a gym rat was. And she looks right at me, deadpan, and says, you don't look like you do. Oh, <laughs> wow. The whole, the whole courtroom starts laughing. Oh, sure. I start laughing because it's a great joke. <laughs> it's a great joke. And oh this is God. all about trusting your instincts. Everybody's on my side like, you you got to strike that lady. She just took a shot. You I said, are you kidding me? I love this lady. Yes, absolutely. And we just made a connection. Yes, big connection. We kept her. We kept her. And uh, that jury came back not only guilty of first degree, but sentenced this guy to death. I mean, wow. so that's the serious part of it. But sure. life is all about making connections, not taking yourself too seriously, and trying to accomplish your objective. Uh, was aiming at the hole, and uh, you I know, was this, aiming at the hole. Yeah, this lady, she said it. You know, like she said it, just like she saw it. Uh, but it was some moment. In How there. about that? Yeah, so yeah. many different perspectives that you gather in, in your position of people, uh, from people, because there's everybody's different. Yes, there. everyone's yeah. different. Everybody's different, and there's no one one right way or one wrong way. You no. just gotta, you have to trust your instincts. You get this far being you. You know, and you've been in some tough, tough spots. Oh I yeah. know, Tom. And oh, yeah. At some point, all those experiences go towards you making educated, informed, instinctive decisions. Yes, no you question. Can, you can't always get it right, but if your instincts got you this far. There's a good reason for that. Yeah, there is a good reason for it. You're right. Yeah. Great story. And effectively, you utilized her ability with the decision that I she did. made. And probably, was. I'm certain that she was influential 
with some of the other jurors. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. She had a, a strong will. I, I knew it from her background, and she was able to not be intimidated, which was funny, <laughs> and made a great connection in, in like a s split second. So you, you've learned, uh, disciplined yourself, not to take any type of a knee-jerk response as some of your peers were mentioning today, you gotta get back at her, you know, take a shot back at her. You thought it out and said, wait a minute, this this lady's just who I'm looking for. Here. Yeah, yeah, they, no, they wanted me to strike her, meaning why take a chance on that lady? Right. Uh, I've kept some pretty unconventional jurors in cases where I've gotten a chance to dig deep. If I feel some connection, some resonance, now you don't wanna do it to spite yourself. Certainly. But if you're making a connection, that's what that's what being good communicators is all about. Being mm -hmm. a good leader is come with me, trust me. I'm going to give you a reason to come with me and trust me on this journey that you've never taken before, but that I've been on before. And that really resonates, and that can carry you a far way. Some people think that you can win or lose a jury trial in jury selection. I still think the evidence has a ton to of do course. with it. Yeah. But there's that trust building that goes on there that if you're a good and effective communicator and and people want to go with you, they'll go with you the whole way. Wow. And it's so important. Yeah. It, it really is. Uh, well, we're going to talk about your these effective strategies and the brilliant tactics that you I don't know uh, about that, but. <laughs> uh, your methodologies uh, that keep the criminals, as I indicated earlier when we began the show, uh, where they belong, behind bars. But there's so much, uh, there's so much involved uh, interviewing people evidence and, and as you you had indicated there's so many different areas that you have to bring them all together yeah to it's true it, it's to make true. it work we're going to be talking about some of these uh other cases the last show i mean i was just my mouth dropped i was i was part of the audience just ah uh, you've seen listen. it all and heard it all i think oh, Tom. No, i'm telling you you're you're, you're a experience and the work that you continue to do it's uh, it's instrumental. In uh, I'm right fortunate, thing. and uh, I, I want to give credit where it's due. You're nobody if you're in a position of leadership without a fantastic team that's uh, not only willing to follow you when the decision gets made, but is willing to question your decisions behind closed doors to make sure that you are making the, the right and best decision that oh, you yeah, possibly no, can. No question about it. There's no I in team. That's right. Joe DiGeralamo says that all the time. 100% right. Our, our buddy. Yeah, uh, he's what's he 85 now? I mean, he yeah, looks like God he's looks like he's 55. Shake his hand, it's like gri grabbing oh, a, a vice grip. You're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> when he won the last uh, two elections ago, I was the correspondent for uh, the media correspondent for WBCB down at uh, the Ben Salem uh, Country Club. That's where the headquarters was. Yeah, headquarters. And he wouldn't talk to me at all. I, I tried to get in to ask Joe, you know, how he's doing. Oh no, he does. He's not seeing anybody right now, Tom. I wanted to interview him. No, no, he's not. He just wants to be left alone. Well, it was nip and tuck. That one election was really close. Two elections ago. Yes, yeah. Really close. It was. And everybody was concerned. Well, all of a sudden it it spun around and Joe was uh, was the here was going to be reelected again. Well, he came out. I wasn't prepared. And uh, I think I had my headset on and everything. And he comes running over to me and lifts me up in the air. I thought I was going to break a couple ribs. <laughs> He's a strong man. They call that farm strong. Yeah, farm strong. Yeah. We did it, Tom. I said, holy jeez, <laughs> yeah. You did it all right. You're breaking my ribs. <laughs> can you sit me down so I can just relax a little bit here? <laughs> holy cow. And as you indicated, his hand, too. I mean, he's yeah. full of vim and vin vigor. No yep. question about it. Yeah, he's a good we're, leader. Yeah, we're going to uh, be right back after a few more words from our sponsor. And we're going to talk about some of these wonderful cases that you prosecuted and uh, brought people to justice. Uh, don't go anywhere. Justice for all with District Attorney Matt Weintraub. We're gonna return very soon. Don't go anywhere. We have something for everyone at Team Toyota. With used cars starting under $6,000, over 80 Toyota certified used vehicles, pre-owned trucks, vans, SUVs, hybrids, and more. And they all come with one year of complimentary maintenance and roadside assistance. Plus, you can shop completely online or in our safe and spacious showrooms for a comfortable and fast process that puts you in control. Visit teamtoyota.net and be safe, be strong, and be a team.
Head out to Dion Square, located at South Oxford Valley and South Olds Boulevard, with the following businesses ready to serve you. Pat Dion Beverages, CVS Pharmacy, Smile Culture Dental, Biomat, Wayner Nationwide Insurance, Liberty Auto Tags, Pennsylvania Fine Wine and Spirits, Lee's Hoagie House, AutoZone, and First National Bank and Trust of Newtown. Make Dion Square your one-stop shop for all your shopping needs at Fairless Hills. For more than 125 years, the Philadelphia Protestant Home has been family to seniors living independently or in personal care and skilled nursing. PPH is a premier community for affordable, quality care and vibrant living. Through its Benevolent Care Fund, PPH also provides peace of mind security to eligible residents who no longer can afford their living expenses. PPH offers spacious studio one and two bedroom apartments with balcony, patio, and garden view options. Call now to schedule a tour, 215-697-8000. Or visit us on the web at pphfamily.org. At PPH, we're family. Hi, this is Dick Vermeil for Independence Blue Cross. In all my years of coaching football, I've seen some really good arms. But none better than the winning arms I've seen lately, helping us to beat COVID-19. Right now, there are many of us who are showing our arms and lining up for vaccinations. When your opportunity comes, be ready. It's safe, effective, and rigorously tested a key in the game plan to defeat the virus. For more information, visit ibx.com. Thanks for staying with us because we have a lot more to share with you. Not me, but Matt Weintraub, our district attorney, uh, with some of the experience and the effectiveness that he provides to you to keep this county very safe with some of the cases that you've uh, been involved with. Let's talk about, if, if I may, uh, ask you about that Middletown robbery because that's several years past yeah it sure is uh, it's been a while but it's one that's always stuck with me i know tom when you and i talk especially on the show we often talk about when keeping people safe means locking up the bad guys and, and certainly yeah, that's that's true but i've taken uh my thought of criminal justice and i've really expanded it and um i, I think that this this case study that i'm about to share is really illustrative of that so I'm an ADA, but I, but I have a good amount of experience, and uh, there's always an ADA on call, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365, day, night, Christmas, New Year's, you're sleeping, one of us is on call. Nice to know. It is. It's important uh, that the public understands that we are reachable at all times, and uh, when it's off hours, they get us through the radio room, through 911. Sure. So a police officer can call uh, 911. And then uh, they, they can get a hold of one of us, and that's what happened. This was a Friday night, I remember, and it was a snowstorm. I remember that, too. And I was on call, and I, I, get, the, I get a call about a robbery, a very serious robbery, a home invasion, armed robbery Woo. in Middletown. I forget which section, but it was in Middletown uh, of, a, of a home. And uh, the, the target actually wasn't there. He was away on a ski trip. But his girlfriend, his living girlfriend, was left behind. And these people, I, I don't know that if they thought she was going to be home or not, but they came in, they broke into the house, they bound her with duct tape, and they immediately go for uh, the safe because the guy that lives there is a suspected weed dealer. Um, I don't remember if they got what they were looking for, but they, they, they threatened and scared this young lady near to death. Oh they, did, they did not injure her, thankfully, but they duct taped her. They made her wait in the bathroom um, and, and said, you know, if you come out, we're going to kill you, things of that nature. Till finally, finally, like an hour later, she, she comes and she's able to loosen her binds and she comes out and then calls the police. The police are immediately mobilized and uh, they process the scene. They get a statement from her. They bring her down to the police station. And in the meantime, because there was snow on the ground, they followed the tracks. And there's some tracks that go through the backyard diagonally to around the front of, a, of another house in the same neighborhood to like under the eave of the garage. And that's where the tracks seem to stop uh, with, with no explanation. So they bang on the door. A young man answers. He's about 19 and he, he roughly fits a profile, and he's cagey, he's dodgy about answering the questions. So they bring him in 
for further questioning to Middletown PD. And uh, they're questioning him. And as they're questioning him, she, the victim, is walking by with another police officer by the room. But these guys had masks and hoodies, were not really that visible. And she freezes, says, that voice, that's the voice of one of the guys that robbed me. Wow. And uh, obviously that was part of the probable cause, which is the basis that we use. And we arrested this guy because he was giving evasive answers. He couldn't account for or wouldn't account for himself. He was caught with a little bit of weed, I think, which indicated that's what they were going after. And the tracks went right to his house. Wow. So th this was presented to me factually by one of our county detectives because that was a pretty serious job. That was really scary. Certainly. And I say, yeah, lock him up. I'll, I'll try that case all day long, meaning that's a good case to me. Of course it is. He didn't confess, but you didn't have an eyewitness. But with her ear witness and the tracks and the snow and the timing all made perfect sense. So we lock him up. He somehow makes bail. He comes from a good family. He somehow makes bail. And his uh, defense attorney starts imploring me, you have the wrong guy. You have the wrong guy. So I don't think so. But let me hear what you have to say. He's like, we gave my guy a polygraph, a box, we call a lie detector test. Yes. And he passed it. Would you guys give him a lie detector test? Now, traditionally, our, our policy is if you've already given a lie detector test because you've been sort of uh, tenderized to it, seasoned to it, now you know how it works, a second test is not going to be helpful. But he convinced me he had something. He convinced me. So we gave him another test. I think it was inconclusive, Tom, which isn't great and it's not terrible. Sure. Um, <clears throat> but so his alibi, he, he said he had an alibi. He said he was not present at the robbery because he was uh, at a Kmart. And here's like sort of the, why he didn't come forward with this at first. His, it was his mom and his stepdad. They had gone to work. He went to Kmart to buy Vaseline for lubrication for self-pleasure. Oh, you boy. get what I mean. Oh, boy. Uh, and... But he was embarrassed to say that. Of course. But he did produce a receipt. So I'm still saying, well, anybody could have gotten that receipt. Get the video. But th but the defense attorney had waited, had asked his associate to get the video, and he waited too long. It was erased. This was the old days oh. of the VCR tapes. Sure. They get erased were... after a while. Jeez. So his best evidence, proof of him buying the Vaseline, was gone. It was gone. But he had a receipt. So now I'm saying... I still got this guy. I mean, if you do the timeline, if it was perfect, he could have done the robbery, gone to Kmart, still been home when the cops came to knock on the door. But it had to be perfect. And remember, this is a snowstorm. So, but also remember, I'm the one that approved the charges. Yes. So my ego is involved. My experience is involved. Uh, but I am thinking about this. It doesn't feel right to me, Tom. It doesn't feel right to me because it had to be perfect. And life is not perfect. No, it's not. No. So I go to my then boss, D.A. Diane Gibbons, and, and I tell her my, my reservations. And she says to me, listen, if you are not comfortable with this, and I was a very aggressive prosecutor uh, back back at that time. If you don't feel comfortable going forward, I give you permission to dismiss the charges. And uh, at that time, th th with with guns, this was a five-year mandatory minimum jail sentence if I would have convicted him. And I would have convicted him. Certainly. I have no doubt of it. So I say, you know what? I, I, I really wrestled with this. I'm going to dismiss the charge. So uh, he was the only guy that we had arrested. We didn't have any of the other guys. Dismiss the charge. Now I have an open unsolved that was just solved, open unsolved, home invasion, armed robbery. I let it go, and it always bothered me. You know, those things fester. Conscience. Of course, one way or the other. Did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? Did I do the right thing? Sure. So then I leave Bucks County. I go uh, to Lehigh County to work for a while as an assistant DA, and I'm back for a judge getting sworn in. Judge Cynthia Roof uh, uh, down a federal court. And the detective who I talked to originally, who, who I approved the charges and we worked the case together, he says to me, this is years later, 
He says, you remember that home invasion or armed robbery in Middletown? I'm like, of course. How could I forget it? How could it? you forget it? Sure. I had the guy. I approved the charges, and I let him go. I said, yeah. He says, well, we just uh, recently made an arrest in a, a series of gun store burglaries, break-ins. We made an arrest, this guy, and he talked. And we're interviewing him. He confesses to those. And he says, and you know that home invasion, armed robbery uh, that you locked up so-and-so for? Of course. Well, it wasn't him. It was me. You had the wrong guy. Oh, my God. How how exhilarating that must have felt. Relief, frankly. Yeah, but right. Yes. Uh, and I never, ever, ever lose sight of that that story. Because if you, you know, hubris, uh, ego, pride, if you let all, if you put all of that before getting it right, you put an innocent man in jail. Yeah, that's one thing you, that you don't want to live with. Not ever. Right. Not ever. No. And uh, I was so grateful that not only, well, I guess my instincts were wrong, but I think anybody's would have been at the beginning, but that I didn't let that color my gut instincts that overcame that to let that guy go what a story yes uh and i make sure anytime that i talk to the kids uh, i try to tell them that story because people because look that's justice in its purest form tom absolutely if you think it about is. it yes you know and then ultimately we locked up the other guy the gun store burglary guy and for the for the home invasion they did but uh whew. how rewarding to yourself uh, that you I, went with your conscience and uh, your abilities but I have, to, I have to admit to you i felt more relief more relief than anything yes because as you know as a former police officer we have so much power and discretion and people are counting on us to use it wisely that's true and they expect and they have a right to count that, on us and expect us that is very true. to use it wisely it was <laughs> It felt good to know that I got it right, but but, and listen, you know, people come to us all the time and they say, "Oh, my my client's innocent, and you got the wrong guy." And you know, I would say ninety nine times out of a hundred, it's it's just they're just making noise. Sure, but I, we take a look at them. We take a look at those cases because that's important to us to get it right. My God, how that that's a marvelous story, and it's a. It, it's real. I thank God. It's it's real, and yeah. how it made you feel and built more confidence with your judgment. I it, hope so. <laughs> yeah, and as you said, the twist. It's on the other side yeah, too. Yeah, that's a twist. You're, you're there to uh, can find someone guilty, but you also want to make sure that if someone's innocent, <sighs> you're not just even though there's evidence there, you don't want to just grab somebody and say goodbye to the case. Absolutely right. Yes. Yeah. You're listening to District Attorney Matt Weintraub here in Bucks County. Justice for all. Uh, here at Team Toyota, we have some other interesting cases that I have all down here. Got pages and Matt pages. Sent, <laughs> Matt sent them to me. And uh, that one there is great when we turn around uh, after we have hear a few words from our sponsors. We'll continue. Uh, we're going to talk about that Philly 4 Philly narcotics four. ring uh, that, you know, we can share with you. And this will just continue uh, with Justice for All as we segue into other shows as well. But uh, we'll return after a few moments. We have another good story for you. Don't go anywhere. We have something for everyone at Team Toyota. With used cars starting under $6,000, over 80 Toyota certified used vehicles, pre-owned trucks, vans, SUVs, hybrids, and more. And they all come with one year of complimentary maintenance and roadside assistance. Plus, you can shop completely online or in our safe and spacious showrooms for a comfortable and fast process that puts you in control. Visit TeamToyota.net and be safe, be strong, and be a team. When you want to relax, go to Hand and Stone Massage and Facial Spas. They make relaxation affordable and convenient. Whether you want a rejuvenating massage or a refreshing facial, Hand and Stone is the place to go. Introductory massage or facials start at just $59.95. Visit HandandStone.com or one of their 50 locations throughout Southern New Jersey, Delaware, and Pennsylvania, including the Lehigh Valley. WBCB is now on your FM dial at 107. Point three. Serving Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer County since 1958. 
You can now listen to all of your BCB favorites crystal clear on 107.3 FM. A new age for WBCB on a new frequency, 107.3. Are you curious what old antiques, collectibles, or household contents are worth? Listen Friday mornings for What's It Worth with Mike the Appraiser, right here on 1490 WBCB. At St. Mary Medical Center, they're on a mission to help you live your healthiest life. Learn more about their advanced technology and innovative procedures, as well as the small steps you can take to be your healthiest self. Meet their highly trained physicians and skilled professionals. Count on St. Mary for experience, brilliant technology, and the most powerful medicine of all, simple human kindness. St. Mary Healthline, every Wednesday at 9 a.m. on 1490 WBCB. We're back with Justice for All with our Bucks County District Attorney, Matt Weintraub. Anxious to hear a few more stories? We're going to get right into it. Uh, obviously, the one that we spoke about at break uh, and right before uh, we, we talked about our sponsors, the Philly Four Narcotics Ring. Uh, great story. This is a great story because uh, it's got a happy ending. It's got a good ending. Yes. And as you know, Tom, we've been uh, just embattled in this drug scourge now for – God, almost a decade. It's yes. just been awful, and uh, it, it, it's terrible to say, but right down the road from us is a place at Kensington where people go virtually from all over the country, but certainly from all over the area to get to get their get drugs. Their drugs. It's, it's, it's known as a place where you used to get the purest and the cheapest heroin in all of the land. Uh, now people have uh, started to use fentanyl as a substitute for heroin, which is even cheaper even deadlier and more, more mass and more more dangerous and more mass produced because it's made in a lab as opposed to grown in in the poppy fields but we still have the same problems and what we were finding here in Bucks County was that not only were our citizens dying as a result of being addicted to this heroin that was coming from Philadelphia but that Philadelphia was uh, the heroin dealers were were marketing it to people in Bucks County, sure, because they're affluent, um, they're expand and and they're expanding their markets. So, we have some great relationships, which I'm very proud of. We work uh, hand in hand with the DEA. We have one of our detectives is embedded with the DEA, so he works for Bucks County for me, but he works with the DEA on a regular basis, which is great for communication, making big cases. And we also work hand in hand, or at least at the time, but I still think we do with our colleagues in the Philly PD's office. Uh, And uh, the the two guys that deserve mentioning, uh, Joey George and Richie Gramlich, these guys were were two fantastic investigators that I got to meet as a result of this, what I'm about to tell you. And uh, that is that we had two seemingly unrelated fatal heroin overdoses one happened in newtown and one happened in ben salem and they happened around the same time uh but but these people did not know each other but what they had in common was the bag stamp so this is crazy but heroin dealers are businessmen now they're killers they're murderers but but they're businessmen and what they do is they want to stamp their bags so that if you think that you, if you like a certain brand of heroin, you'll go back for that brand. Same supplier. You know, yep. Right? Yeah. Just like Coke and Pepsi try to get brand loyalty, these drug dealers are trying to do the same thing. So this was number one way to go. That was what was the number one with the number sign way to go was stamped on the bag. And the poor guy in Newtown and the poor guy in Ben Salem both died from heroin. Same bag stamp. Same bag stamp. So we start working backwards. We start out with both of these fatalities and start working backwards to try to figure out where they got their drugs. And once we figure out where they got their drugs, we start what's called buying into them, buying into these drug dealers. And it turned out it was what I now call a Philly Four, but it was the Del Valle Narco Trafficking Organization, which is down there in, uh, it was like in the uh, Kensington area. Kensington and Lehigh down in that. Yep. Yeah, I'm yeah. Familiar. I'm very you know familiar it. with yeah. That was my district. Oh, uh, yeah. so I don't, well, I don't know if it's changed, but. It's changed. Uh, it's worse. 
So what what would happen is, in order to make it, because you, we're starting with, unfortunately, two two guys that can no longer talk because they're dead. Uh, but we go through their phones and figure out where their connects are, the phone numbers they have in common, and right. start working back to this organization. And uh, uh, Richie and Joey and and all these guys, they 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 start ordering up and creating, making a case, and it's it's all on video and uh, audio, and you see, and they start buying from this one guy, Will, uh, and then uh, Will goes to the next level higher and then goes to the next level higher, which is which is Joseph Del Valle. He's the big the big fish. The big fish. Yeah, and uh, they did an incredible investigation. And one of the things that I was trying to get them to do, because the good news is Bucks County is not Philadelphia, but for purposes of this case, that was also the bad news, because try as we might, we could not get them to come up to Bucks County uh. to deliver drugs. They were They were too smart. Sure. Because they know. They knew. In Bucks County, we lock up drug dealers. So we end up with the case. This is as good as it's going to get. We have all these buys. They all occur in Philadelphia. And finally, it's like put up or shut up time. And uh, they're like, look, we got nothing that happened in Bucks County. And we said, well, wait a minute. The phone calls to buy the drugs happen in Bucks County. The meets and the sales all happen in Philly. That line of evidence You have that connect. Yeah. Uh, And it's. Using a phone is called uh, something access device. Uh, I'm not even saying it right, but that's a crime in and of itself. So sure these is. guys were utilizing their phones across Bucks County lines to get the, the buyer. That's the hook. So we lock up the whole organization. We get four of them. Uh, and they're, and they're, they have kilos, kilos of drugs and, and on a pretty regular basis. So we bring them up. Um, and their first argument is, well, wait a minute. We didn't do anything in Bucks County. We, this is the first time we were ever even here. I'm like, too bad. Sorry. Tell it to the judge. That's right. And uh, the judge went my way on this. That was the biggest, hardest motion of, of, of all of it. And then one guy pled, another guy, and another guy pled. And the first guy, this guy, Will, uh, he pled guilty, and he cooperated against the big guy because the big guy, Del Valle, he never dealt any drugs. He would always make sure his dealers had the drugs. Right. You know how they hands they, off. In, hands off. You got it. So we really needed him, and he was uh, a great witness. To, and I have one funny anecdote about that. So he's on the stand, and the defense attorney. This is a full blown jury trial for Del Valle, the big, the big guns. And uh, the guy, is, he was good to prep. He 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 knew his role. This was a business transaction. You're still going to jail, but you're trying to go to jail for less if you help me. Help and me out. That's how it works. Um, the defense attorney asks him a question, and she thinks she's got a zinger. She says, yeah, I know your name is Will such and so, but on the street, what do they call you? And he goes, mafia. Oh. And she's thinking she's scoring points. Meanwhile, I'm like. This is this great. great. This couldn't be anybody. You know, the jury's there eating their figurative popcorn. Oh, yeah, like they yeah. feel like they're watching Goodfellas this or something. This is fantastic. They like, and it mean it gave them even more credibility. Of course it you did. You know, uh, and they believed every word he said. They ended up uh, convicting Del Valle. We we cleaned up the organization, uh, and they never even had ever set foot in Bucks County. So when I talk about justice, takes many forms. Sometimes the long arm of the law gets a little longer and a little longer and a little longer because I got to take care of my people here in Bucks County. Of course you do, yeah. So um, that guy, Del Valle, he ended up getting decades in jail. He, he had, we had a tough but very fair judge. She sentenced him appropriately but severely. Woo. Uh, yeah, and he was like, look, I'm afraid I'm going to die in jail. And I said, well, you, you know, you should have thought of that before you started selling his poison. Right. Uh, so that was a great a great ending to a good story there. Great story is right. Yeah. Well, we still have five minutes. So okay. I'd like to get in a little bit All right. uh, with our next case. Let's which do is, it. Which is Tolly. Tolly. Don Tollison. <laughs> if for those of you uh, in my age bracket, uh, you know, he was the Channel 6 Action News sportscaster who uh, fell astray. He wasn't uh, fit up to what, what a lot of people thought his character was. And, yeah, very it, sad. It, it was a sad story, and it, it, it comes under the theory, uh, you know, pride goeth before a fall. 
and the bigger you are, the harder you fall. That's why you got to always maintain. You got to stay humble. And uh, absolutely, he, he later admitted this. But what happened was he was he fell on hard times. I think he was with Fox for a while. And if you talk about like a Philly icon, next he was. to Rocky, he was he was, he was a there. Philly icon, you know. And um, <clears throat> he ran these charitable organizations. Uh, and what happened was he ended up losing his job as a sportscaster. And then he th I think he had a car accident as well, and he got a settlement, but he was still experiencing a lot of pain. So he didn't really have a steady income, and he started using these charitable works as his own piggy bank. And I likened it to he wasn't robbing Peter to pay Paul. He used to. He was robbing Peter and Paul to pay himself. And all of these charitable organizations were not getting the money he was promising them. And all these people that he promised these trips to the Super Bowl. That's I was what about he would to do, ask you, yeah, trips. Weren't getting their trips. For a little while, he was perpetuating it by hosting something today, getting a bunch of money, and then making sure he could pay for the trips that he hosted six months ago for the event he hosted six months ago. A Ponzi scheme, sure. basically. Sure. Pyramid scheme. He knew that it was going to catch up to him, though. Apparently. Well, eventually. Yeah. And uh, as it turns out, it was a Brad Fox Foundation, one of our one of our Bucks County's own, who was a, a Montgomery County cop who died in the line of duty. He was shot and killed in the line of duty. They were having a foundation event for him, and Tali showed up and started saying, hey, I'll, I'll sell you a Super Bowl package for 500 hours. A ticket, a hotel, and a flight for five hundred dollars, and then he wasn't selling enough, so he's like, "I'll reduce it to two fifty. Mm. Oh boy! And people were, well, of they course, were buying, buying them. Sure, but if it sounds too good to be true, it isn't, right? <laughs> it's too good to be true. So he, it all collapsed on him. Sure. And then we started looking into his books, and sure enough, we saw the fraud. But here's the the, the twist, and this comes under the justice takes many forms heading. He had a lawyer. He was scheduled to plead guilty, and he reneged. He did not plead guilty. So we end up going to trial, and he wants to get a different lawyer. And the judge says, I'm not giving you a different lawyer. You had a lawyer, yes, a free lawyer, right? and you got rid of him. So he's like, all right, I guess I'll represent myself. That's right. I remember that now. So the, here's the craziest part. That guy was brilliant and charismatic. And I always say, because he's learning literally as he's doing this own it, sure. against me, I say the trial lasts two weeks. If it had lasted a third week, he might have won. Might have won the case. He's getting so good at this so fast. My God. And very personable, as you can probably yes, remember. I remember. Um, but it didn't work. He was found guilty, and uh, he had to go to jail. He had to go to state prison. A few years. Yeah, a couple, four. Th couple, three, yeah, maybe even three to six, somewhere right. in there. Yes. And he had to pay all of his uh, all of his victims back, which uh, was a long, long list. But I'll never forget, for, for some reason, he had, well, I guess we know why, because it's uh, you're, you're an icon status. And he admitted, he's like, look, I never had to pay for a drink in, in the whole area. Everybody's right. buying me drinks. But he had this desire to be liked by me, but I was seeing through it. Of course you were. He so, was trying to be effective, and it didn't work. I would see through it, and yeah. it drove him nuts. I'll bet. At one point, we're in front of the judge, and he's saying how he wasn't taking his diabetes, uh, his insulin. But, yeah. And uh, so the judge is like, look, I'm going to have to send you to the hospital. We're, gonna, we're in the middle of the trial, Tom. Jeez. So I'm rolling my eyes because I'm being expressive. And he turns to me, and he says, man, honest to God, I'm not lying. I feel sick. I really do. I said, just talk to the judge. Talk to the judge. Talk Please stop judge. doing it with me. I already have my wall yeah, up. Yeah. We're going to continue this, obviously, because we're running out of time, Bray, right? Wow. Where'd it go? It, it, it goes by so fast, so fast. Matt. But we're going to get back to Don Tollefson. There's a, more to share with, uh, you know, all of his, uh, you know, ineffectiveness, uh, you know, as a sports professional and then how he took advantage of people. But I want to thank you once again for being here. This show that you have is people they're, they're loving it they're i hope loving it. oh they they are definitely <laughs> loving it and uh please understand that you're listening to you're listening to wbcb's premiere show we not premiere show it's a premiere show every time we do one with you uh it's it's just great to have our district attorney here sharing a lot of good stories and letting you understand how and why this is such a safe county here because of 
people such as our district attorney, Matt Weintraub. We'll return uh, next month, and we'll have some more stories to share with you. I'm Tom Mellon on behalf of WBCB 1490 and uh, 107.3 and Matt Weintraub. Thank you for joining us. Be safe. Stay well. Jerry, I'm not coming home to walk the dog today because the poor dog is under medication because oh. of the thunder and everything. Oh, yeah. But I'll be coming home soon. And most importantly, God bless America.